Microsoft invited me to demo some of the new service computers that have recently launched. And while I did already kind of do a video on the Surface laptop, which I kind of love the design of, you can check that video out below, I haven't yet had any time with the new Surface Pro. So it seemed like a good chance to see what was up with it, what's new, etc. I went up to it though, and it just kind of looks the same. So I eventually asked a rep there to let me know what are the differences between this new Surface Pro and the last one. And it turns out there's a lot. Microsoft this time around was obsessed with making subtle changes that overall made a big difference. From little things like the inside vents that you can't even really see that easily, being painted to match the rest of the device and make them less noticeable, and the edges of the device are now rounded slightly to give it a little bit more of a modern look. To the fact that the hinge now retracts back to 15% instead of 30%, which makes for drawing on it feel a lot more natural and a lot more sturdy. They even colored the front cameras to make them blend in more with the front glass. After telling me all that, the rep then kind of smirked a little and said, on the inside though, we basically started from scratch. So besides the usual upgrade to the processor, which is now a KB Lake 7th gen Intel version, they also rearranged everything inside and added a lot more copper, he tells me. The point of the copper is that it helps cool the device a lot better than the last model. So much so that the i5 models are actually fanless, while the i7 models have a fan, but I'm told it turns on much less often than before. Another part of the internal redesign is something I think a lot of Surface Pro fans will appreciate, and that's thanks to a much smaller SSD, they're able to put in a much bigger battery. The battery is now 45 watt hours in size versus the 39 watt hours from the Pro 4. And that combined with a more power efficient KB Lake processor translates to an advertised battery life that's four hours more than the previous model, bringing it to 13 and a half hours. The extra room inside also means that for the first time, Microsoft is going to offer an LTE model. Now, I personally don't use LTE on laptops because I'd rather just tether to my phone, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that love the idea of having it just built into the computer and not having to worry about it. Beyond the laptop, tablet, I don't know what we're calling these things nowadays anymore, there's also been some upgrade to the accessories. The keyboard, now sports the Alcantara fabric to help it match the new Surface laptop and has the same colors. Besides the fabric and color, the keys now have a bit more travel to them and are backwards compatible to work on the old Surface Pro 4 as well. In addition to the new Surface type cover, they also launched matching pens alongside it. And this new and improved pen isn't just available in pretty colors, they're, according to Microsoft, the fastest pens in the world. The new pen has increased the sensitivity points to 4096 and has quote unquote no perceived lag when writing with it. They also added the ability to tilt the pen, which allows you to use the side of it for shading with a pencil, for example, a feature that is seen in much more professional Wacom solutions. The new Surface Pro starts at $799 for the Core M with 4 gigs of RAM, Intel 615 GPU, and 128 gigs of storage. You can get the i5 model with the same storage and RAM, but the faster 620 GPU for $1000, and double the RAM and storage to $1299. The i7 models all have the Iris Plus 640 GPU, but come in 8 gigs of RAM with a 256 gigabyte SSD for $1,600, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 SSD for $2,200, and a top model with the same specs as the last, but a terabyte SSD for $2,700. Unfortunately, none of these prices include the type cover or the pen, which will cost you $160 and $100 respectively. There you guys, a quick rundown of the major features that make the Surface Pro different than the Surface Pro 4. The biggest one, of course, being that battery life, which I'm sure a lot of people are excited about. But Microsoft, by the way, was kind enough to give me one of these to test. So please let me know in the comments below if you guys would like a full review. Also, what things you might want to see in a video, whether it's a review or a completely different video on the Surface Pro, let me know in the comments below. Always love to hear from you guys. And if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please check out my channel. The link is around here somewhere. And if you like what you see there, please subscribe. As always, though, thanks for watching.